The ship, the Manchester Challenge, is a 12,000 tonner designed to carry 450 containers under cover in her holds. That's more than any other ship of its kind. The containers are loaded at a special pier that's been built in the Manchester docks. And with two more ships like this, which should soon be ready, there'll be a weekly shuttle service between Manchester and Montreal. Loading and unloading is now a comparatively simple job. And life on the bridge has changed as well. This ship is packed with some of the most up-to-date and sophisticated electronic and navigation equipment. This radar here, for instance. It's one of the latest models, and it's teamed up with a semi-automatic radar plotter for tracking ships, so you can get plenty of warning if you're on collision courses. Once you've tuned in this weather forecaster, it automatically prints out a complete weather chart in detail, and you can tune it in to the nearest weather station to wherever your ship happens to be. And for navigating when you're close to the shore, this direction finder can be tuned in to receive signals from lighthouses. Groups of lighthouses are on the same frequency, and this automatically chooses three of them to get a fix on your position. Although most of the equipment here is the very latest of its kind, this navigational receiver is absolutely new, and it's the first time it's been tried out. It's receiving very low frequency pulses, which are being transmitted from four land transmitting stations in Norway, in New York, in Trinidad and Hawaii. And the pulses are putting up sets of figures on this display and using three sets of figures you can pinpoint your position to within a mile at any time during your voyage on this chart. It's crisscrossed with four sets of lines and they're colored blue, purple, green and red. Each of the lines is numbered and the numbers correspond to the numbers that were coming up on the display. Each reading that you take from the display gives you the line nearest to your position and your distance from it. So by using three of them for a triangulation, you know exactly where you are. And using this system, you're quicker and more accurate than using any reading taken from the sun. And the system can now cover the whole of the northern hemisphere. Maybe the most interesting thing they've got here is a sort of robot monitor. And it'll give the ship's engineers a land lover's nine to five working day. It's too big to fit in up here on the bridge, so it's got a room of its own down below. This is the automatic engine control system, and it's said to be the most advanced equipment of its kind to go into service in a merchant ship anywhere in the world today. It keeps a constant check on more than 200 functions in the ship's engine room. Functions like oil pressure, water temperature, generator loading, and it scans them all every half second. 200 monitoring devices like this are fitted at key points throughout the engine room, relaying essential information about how all the machinery is running to the automatic control room. And with the devices acting as watchdogs, the whole engine room can operate without anyone being there. Even the control room runs itself, and one of the engineer's most tedious jobs still gets done. The log for all the 200 checkpoints is automatically printed out every four hours. Any faults that might have developed are included in the report. Now, if anything at all goes wrong in the engine room, this is what happens. The indicator board shows the engineer immediately where the fault is, and the display tells him what's wrong. But despite all the automation, it still takes engineers to do the repair work. After all that, what happens if there's something wrong with the system itself? Well, no problems, because they've built in a system to check the system. If one of these lights goes on, it indicates where the fault is. Then the engineer goes to the fault area, he goes through a simple check routine, which will tell him which module is faulty, and he replaces it. There are no repairs to be done at all. Late last night, the Manchester Challenge started her maiden voyage, but she left 30 hours late. Some basic details had been overlooked. The anchor punched a hole in the bows. The gangplank didn't fit, so its sea door couldn't be shut. And loading took far too long. Human faults and a bad start. 
But the ship itself is still the most advanced of its kind in the world. It's the human side that let it down. Still the biggest problem to be solved in the age of automation.